Hello guys, it's Alexis here, and welcome to another Dragon Ball discussion. Today we're going to be talking about Khalifla, and basically I'm just going to be talking about why I like Khalifla, and why I kind of understand why she gets flack, but I'm going to try and defend her and explain why I actually really like Khalifla. So if you guys like these kind of discussion videos, if you enjoy this by the end, make sure to hit the like button because it really helps the channel. But anyway, I'm going to get straight into this. So first of all, personality wise, Khalifla isn't exactly a regular Saiyan. And I know that isn't really saying much considering Goku and Vegeta basically are really powerful and they aren't conventional Saiyans because, you know, their godly might makes them stand out from the Saiyan crowd. However, what I'm mainly talking about is, with Khalifla, her personality isn't really like many other Saiyans or any other Saiyans that we've seen in the series, because at the start of Dragon Ball Super, when we first see her, she's actually like a crime boss, and on the um, planet Sadala, which is the Universe 6 Saiyan planet, because the climate is very different from the Universe 7 Saiyan planet, obviously, because Frieza blew that one up, Planet Vegeta. Basically, Khalifla steals from people and essentially runs like a little, I guess like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Essentially like a mob or something. And we haven't really seen Saiyans do that apart from her, because obviously Universe 6 is different. She's got like a completely different outlook on life compared to like Goku and Vegeta. However, she still shares that kind of similar love for combat however it's more selfish i guess for khalifla because she's mainly doing it because well obviously for the universe 6 tournament it wasn't selfish because she wanted to get strong to win the tournament however she's not like other saiyans where vegeta and goku love the thrill of battle where khalifla does enjoy it however she's got a more well, I guess she's kind of a little bit like Vegeta, a bit more selfish. However, she's got a very different dynamic personality-wise, where they didn't really go in depth with her backstory and Super too much. We just kind of found out she runs a mob, and she's obviously the leader because she's the strongest of the mob. And obviously, coming back from the Tournament of Power, she'll definitely be the strongest of Kale. But um, essentially, she has a different whole dynamic in her life, and that also explains why she's so headstrong and has a kind of no respect attitude unless, you know, she has a reason to respect them. For example, with Shampa, she doesn't really take Shampa's, you know, bratty attitude, and she kind of says things how they are, even though she's, if even if she's, like, outmatched, she'll still speak her mind and she won't really care. In that respect, she's a typical Saiyan where she'll diss the person that's, like, leagues above her and still try to beat them up anyway, and I really like that personally. Secondly, I also really love her dynamic with Kale, Essentially, she's very protective of Kale. They have a very close bond, and they call, well, Kale calls Khalifla sis, and they have a really, like, close bond. And I just really like the way that's handled in Dragon Ball Super. We see that a lot during the Tournament of Power. She kind of, like, babies Kale and protects her, and then is really proud of her when Kale unleashes her, like, potential, and they finally get to fight together. And I think that's something interesting, because obviously, Goku and Vegeta are friends now. However, they don't have a bond like Kale and Khalifla do, and I personally think it adds a really strong dynamic to, like, their duo, and one of them can exist throughout the other, however, they're more interesting as a pair, and it's really nice the way they got to fuse in Dragon Ball Super, because... It just fits their characters well. Like, if you looked at any Saiyans in the series, apart from Goku and Vegeta, they definitely are the best, like, fusion pair because of their close bond. And I think that also makes their fusion stronger as well, in my opinion. Because they, you know, they have a close bond and I can imagine that really helps when fighting because they care about each other and they want to win together. Also, something fun about Khalifla, which I've kind of stated, is I just really like her attitude as to she doesn't really respect her opponents too much until they show basically her respect to and prove that they can hold their own. For example, Khalifa respects Goku because Goku took the time to train her, you know, how to become a Super Saiyan 2 and also taught her how to, you know, fight more smart rather than just trying to flat out brawl someone with no technique. If you actually watch her in the Tournament of Power, she actually learns how to adapt with Kale and fight together, and she also learns how to deal with stuff like the afterimage technique, because Goku, like, messes with her and forces her to adapt, 
And I think in the future, if Dragon Ball Super comes back, which I think it will, I feel like if Khalifa, they'll probably make Kayla and Khalifa more characters which stick around a bit more. And they'll probably have like their own Planet Sadala arc in Universe 6. Like, like Goku and Vegeta might come from Universe 7 to Universe 6 or something. And I really think that um, Khalifa has some good character development in the tournament of power because when you think about it apart from she still likes kale before the tournament they have a close bond however like Khalifa's took a lot of lessons from the tournament of power and she's also during the tournament of power learned to respect kaba a bit more too and yeah that's a nice bit of character development even though kaba may not be as strong as Khalifa, she still saw that kaba did his best and did well in the tournament so she's learned to respect people more for their personal kind of will and fire rather than just judging them on strength alone and i think that's a big step for the character another reason khalifa is cool is that basically she's a strong female character who don't take any rubbish from anyone and i know some people groan when they hear that but it's nice to see another female character in the dra in the you know dragon ball who can hold their own and doesn't back down and where all the kind of understandably a lot basically all the kais and the majority of the universes were frightened of like zeno and stuff and just she just doesn't seem threatened by higher powers and i just really like the way she doesn't care she's just gonna do her best and do her best to like win and i just like the way she doesn't back down and i think that's what people love about her too like she's very brash and headstrong although that has some disadvantages it really does have a lot of advantages because that really helped Khalifa push herself in the Tournament of Power and get a lot stronger. And I know a lot of people think her powering up's a bit ridiculous in the Tournament of Power, and I understand that. However, something people don't think about is the Universe 6 Saiyans are naturally a lot stronger than the Universe 7 Saiyans. They obviously, because Khalifa's a mob boss, she probably did a lot of fighting anyway. However, basically, from what we can tell, especially from when Kaba first met Vegeta, he was basically fighting base form Vegeta pretty evenly, even though you know, we know how much Vegeta's been through, and even though Kaba's probably had less battle training than Vegeta, it kind of shows that the Universe 6 Saiyans, or at least some of them, have a lot of potential, like a crazy amount of potential, a bit like Gohan. So, it's not too ridiculous, because a requirement of becoming Super Saiyan is having a strong body, and, you know, a strong will, which Khalifa definitely has, and obviously the Tengu back isn't too popular, however, it's just another route to becoming Super Saiyan, so... I don't mind it too much. It, like, it, when I first heard about it, it was a bit ridiculous. However, her body was definitely strong enough to become a Super Saiyan. And she got Super Saiyan 2 very quick, but I just kind of like how the character can adapt fast. And she's obviously got a, a lot of potential. And it's not too far-fetched considering Goten and Trunks became Super Saiyans when they were kids. So when you actually think about it, it's not too bad. And obviously, she looks really cool and she's pretty. And... Her hairstyle is wacky, which I like, and it looks really good when she becomes Super Saiyan 1 and 2. And especially, I like Kefla with Kale and Khalifla fused, they just look awesome. And it seems like Khalifla is the dominant personality when they become Kefla, just because it's basically 95% Kale and a bit of Kale's rage, I guess. But, you know. Anyway, these are a few of the reasons why I like Khalifla. Um, write down in the comments down below if you like Khalifla too. I hope you like these kind of discussion videos, because I definitely do. I think they're really cool. I apologise, my throat's a little sore today, so if I sound a little off, that's what it is. I went to, like, an event and I was cheering, and my throat's still not fully recovered. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel. And I'm hoping to, you know, make the channel grow, so a like seriously helps. Comment down below whatever things you want me to discuss and whatever videos you want me to make. Also, you can join my Discord down below. There's a link in the description for it. Everyone's welcome to join. There's a link to my Patreon if you want to support me there. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for getting this far. It, I really appreciate you spending your time here. It just it means a lot to me. Thank you. Anyway, this has been Queen18. I hope you've had a lovely day. And I guess I'll catch you down that long winding road. Bye.